this video, we're going to discuss the different types of sensory receptors. First, we have baroreceptors. Baroreceptor cells detect pressure. An example are the baroreceptors in our blood vessels. In response to high blood pressure or low blood pressure, our body is able to trigger responses that will be able to bring blood pressure back to normal levels. Next, we have mechanoreceptors that are for detecting mechanical forces. Usually we think about the mechanoreceptors in our skin that can detect touch, pressure, as well as stretching. However, another example of mechanoreceptors are the auditory receptors in our ear. Within our ear or auditory system, we have hair cells that detect mechanical stimuli in the form of sound. So another example of mechanoreceptors. Next, we have chemoreceptors that detect chemical substances. So that means here, the sensory transduction process is based on binding different chemical compounds. And as examples, we have olfactory receptors for smell, and we also have gustatory receptor cells or taste cells for taste. Next, we have photoreceptors that are for detecting light. Within the retina of our eyes, we have two different types of photoreceptors. We have cone cells that are for responding to bright light of different colors. So we say that cone cells are responsible for color detection. We also have rod cells that are, are for low intensity light. So you might have noticed when you are in dim light situations, you can't really see different colors like blue, green, and red, but you can still see everything just sort of appears black and white. And that's because at low light intensity situations, cone cells are not activated, so we cannot see color, but rod cells are activated, so we can still see. Next, we have thermoreceptors. These are for detecting temperature. Within our skin, as well as other parts of our body, we have free nerve endings that detect temperature changes, low temperatures, and high temperatures. Interestingly, many of these free nerve endings also contain receptors for certain chemical compounds. So that's why when you eat spicy foods, we can detect the capsaicin that activates these same thermoreceptors. So even though you might be eating food that isn't hot, you still feel warmth because of the activation of these cells through these different receptors. Next, we have nociceptors for pain detection. These are also free nerve endings, and these respond to noxious stimuli. And noxious stimuli can include extreme temperatures, extreme mechanical forces, or they can also be chemical substances. Finally, we have proprioceptors that detect self-movement and body positions. So you might realize that when you're moving, you can actually detect that your body is moving. So for instance, when you're in an elevator, when the elevator goes up or the elevator goes down, you're able to detect that motion. At the same time, you're also able to detect body position. So that's why if you close your eyes, you're able to take your finger and touch your nose. Even though you can't see yourself touching your nose because of your proprioceptors in your body that allow you to detect body and limb position, you're still able to execute basic tasks like touching your nose without vision. Okay, so those are the different types of sensory receptors.